Right now, let's bring in Mr. January, the pinup poster for the month, Pat Pagano. Good morning, Pat. Good morning, Marshall. Happy New Year to you and everybody. And, uh, yeah, it does feel like winter. And, uh, you know, if you were in South Jersey or um, Delaware, it will be looking like winter there because they are going to get double-digit snowfall. Good for them. Yep, (laughs) and that will just cut itself off. There'll be such a sharp line across Long Island. I mean, Long Island could see a couple of inches of snow, but north of that, nothing. Partly sunny. Skies will become partly sunny here today. It'll be windy. The high will be 30. And at this time of the year, as you could see by our new created form, the normal is 36. Do you like our new form? I think uh, I think Anthony Martella did a nice job. Yes, I like it very much. Yeah, I I think did, he did a very nice job. I like the instructions at the bottom of it, too, and everything, explaining what everything is. Yeah, uh, yep, we do all of that um, so that uh, anybody new coming aboard uh, does not scratch their heads. And they know uh, they know exactly what what areas we cover and what they have to do. So that's a good thing. Uh, tonight will be a clear cold night, 10 to 15. And tomorrow, a nice sunny day, mid-30s, which is normal. Sun with increasing clouds for Wednesday. Later in the day, there may be some rain showers working in. Not snow showers, rain showers. Mid-40s, you have a chance of a rain or snow shower on Thursday, low 40s. And then the jury's out for Friday, but... Here comes another storm that could bring bring snow this far north. Uh, you know, not just dumb off. Uh, we'll have to see what happens because there is a big discrepancy uh, between the models. A couple of the models are forecasting uh, significant snow, the Canadian model and the Euro model. But the American models are saying, no, we don't think so. So, uh, again, it's out to lunch there. And we'll just wait. We'll hopefully have a better idea by about Wednesday. Whatever the case may be on Friday, uh, the weekend will be cold, fair and cold. I don't think there'll be any storms over the weekend. So uh, that about sums up the weather for um, for this week and first week of January, as you pointed out, um, a little bit more seasonable the way it should be. Now, is this, a, is this change uh, in here now where we're not going to get these brief warm-ups where we go to 45 and 50? Well, we'll be going to mid forties on Wednesday. Okay. You know, and and Thursday we're expecting low forties, uh, but I don't see. I really don't see fifty this week at all. Good. We got we got we got to get rid of some of this mud. Oh yeah, it was so <coughs> wasn't it so murky over the New Year's weekend? Yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness, the drizzle, the fog, uh, uh, and it was just so balmy. Um, you know, New Year's Eve, of course, the temperature never ever. Uh, in, in Times Square, I don't think it got below 50 degrees. Um, and uh, I watched um, about, let's put it this way. I put on uh, Seacrest at a quarter to 12, shut it off at 12.15 because, number one, not only was there a lack of entertainment, but the whole thing was terrible. I thought, I thought it was the worst that I've ever seen, sort of a, a lot of other people. And the other thing that I found really uh, amazing was that um, there were lots of people in the crowd and even uh, I saw a policeman with no masks on. And uh, I guess nobody said anything about that, but you know what? Uh, good for them. I mean, you know, to be that courageous. But uh, that was that. New Year's Day, I was not feeling good at all. I just want you to know that New Year's Day was just a, a very off day for me. Uh, I don't know. My stomach was just not up to par. And then yesterday, um, uh, ex-employee and um, a good friend of mine, many, many years, he joined Metro Water back in 1987, and we stayed friends uh, the whole time. Bob was, uh, Bob Hepler, uh, now the uh, manager at JFK Airport for weather observing, um, Real, real good friend. So he came up with his family, and it's just amazing to see the guys, the the two sons. I remember when they were born, and it's amazing to see them now. One is graduating college this year, going to be a wild animal veterinarian. Wow. And the other gentleman is now in med school, studying to be an anesthesiologist. And uh, he brought his girlfriend, who is a 
CPA for Price Waterhouse. Um, they were they were also interested interesting to talk to, and um, I just get a big kick out of that. You know, to think that they were little babies um, when they first uh, when we first met them, and now here they are, uh, moving on. And guess what? And we're getting older. Oh, we're definitely getting older now. You were sick on New Year's Day. Yeah. Was that from the food you had New Year's Eve? I don't know. Um, I'm not saying it was bad food, but did you just eat too much? Uh, I didn't really eat a lot, but I had one thing on New Year's Eve that I never, ever had. What was that? I had a drink. It was a martini. There you and go. I don't, I, I don't drink. It was a cranberry martini. There you go. And I, I, I just don't think, you know... I don't drink. I mean, I don't even have wine. Um, uh, and, you know, and it just was so nice and sweet. And it went down so easy, but obviously did not agree with yours truly. How many pieces of fish did you have? I didn't have any fish at all. None? No, no fish. Um, had um, beef, which was delicious, scalloped potatoes, carrots, um, and a bean salad, which was like um, string beans, asparagus, and bro broccolini. Um, that's what I had, and I didn't overindulge in, in any of that. Um, I did have dessert, and I normally really don't eat sweets, so I think between the martini, that was real sweet, and, uh, and the dessert that did me in on the New Year's Day. Well, for New Year's Day, for New Year's Eve dinner, I had yeah. uh, a homemade tamale, a a, a refried bean uh, and cheese tamale. I had um, an enchilada, which was uh, pulled pork and uh, and beans, and some. Uh, I also had some red beans and rice. That was my, my that was my New Year's Eve dinner. Um, it sounded to me like you were sort of uh, in the uh, Mexican mode. <laughs> it's it's what it's what I had. I I've I've made I've made up these things ahead of time, and so uh, oh, okay. I, I pull them out of the I pull them out of the freezer, and uh, okay. and uh, the the rice and beans I, I bag I put into a pool, you know hot water <clears throat> and I let it boil for about twelve minutes, and the other ones I just put in the microwave. So mm -hmm. it's very and it's it's food I made, so I know where it came from, and. Uh, and you were fine. And I was, and I was fine. Oh, by the way, I asked Tyler, as a um, um, pre-anesthesiologist, what his thoughts were on the virus. And what did he say? He said they had just uh, had a meeting um, with his uh, manager and stuff like that in uh, uh, where they, they work in the lab and stuff like this right now. Uh, and he said they are, the thinking is that uh, if there is another variant, it will be named new and you, he said, but this variant is not as potent as Delta because he thinks and they think that the virus has seen um, the better of its day. And even if there is another variant called new and you, uh, it's going to be even less potent than the one that is presently here now. So he thinks that it's de on its Dying trail downward. Oh. I thought that was encouraging. Well, I think it's uh, it's 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 um, <clears throat> I think it's 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 becoming weaker and weaker because like every a virus, it wants to live, and so it has to have people around. Uh, and the to more live. people that get vaccinated, <clears throat> yeah. the less people that it could affect them. But um, it's it's not um, it's not what um, how can we say it. It's just not living up to its reputation, that's all. Now, uh, a lot of people, and I, I happen to uh, 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 agree with this, is they think that this pandemic is going to become an endemic. Right. Um, and uh, that's, that's a whole lot different. Uh, the difference between a pandemic and an end epidemic is that uh, the outbreak is the epidemic, when there's, of course, the cases surge and increase, um, but then the disease spreads and continues to affect a large number of people, 
it's then a pandemic and then it becomes an endemic so uh so that's what most people are saying now um uh and uh, and most people believe that that's what's going to happen when that happens i mean uh it it it's no longer going to be an acute disease it's, it's going to be like the flu the flu and stuff like that so right it's never going to go away it's going to be there but uh that's what that's what most people are saying now well you know what <laughs> we've all been through two years of it we've had enough so it's about time <laughs> it is about time <laughs> you're absolutely right it is about time yeah. All right, Pat. Well, that's our forecast, our first forecast from you for the new year. Well, thank you very much, and happy and healthy new year to everybody. Be safe. See you in the morning, Marshall. No cocktails today. None. Okay, Pat, take care. Okay, bye-bye. Uh, Pat Pagano this morning in the Weather Center with a check on our tri-state forecast here on Robin Hood Radio.